In this video, I'd like to show you how you can use your calculator to help you solve a system of equations. The example that I'm using comes from your lesson practice 30A. It's the very first problem. I have it written up here. And the first thing that I did was I constructed my coefficient matrix and I've color coded this so you can see where these numbers came from. The numbers in my coefficient matrix are the coefficients that actually accompany each of the variables in the equations above. And something that's really important for you to note is that if there is a negative sign in front of any of the coefficients, you need to make sure to include that negative sign in your matrix. After I came up with my coefficient matrix, I also constructed my constant matrix. And remember, the constant matrix comes from the constant terms that appear at the right of the equal sign. So the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out how do we get this into our calculator. Uh, we want to enter both of these matrices. So I have my calculator here. And I'm going to reposition things a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to access a matrix template. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to press the alpha button and then zoom. And it's going to put this little screen up here and I need to select the dimensions of my matrix. Okay, so it looks like I have a 3x3 three three coefficient matrix three rows and three columns. So I'm going to go here and actually, if you look, the threes have already been highlighted. Um, so that means that all I would need to do is just hit okay. But if they weren't highlighted, I would use my arrow key to advance my cursor. And then I would hit enter to select three rows and then I could use my down arrow to select three columns. I'll hit the Enter key again, and then I need to hit the OK. And once I hit Enter, I should get this matrix template. OK, now this matrix template is filled with zeros. I need to start replacing the zeros with the numbers from my coefficient matrix. So I'm going to be um, putting the numbers in and using my arrow key to help me advance through the matrix. So I'll start entering the numbers. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a glare here. Let's see if I can move things a little bit. Okay, so the first number is three. And then I'm going to just hit my right arrow. The next number is six, right arrow. Then I have a negative four, and remember, we need to be using the negative key down here at the bottom of the calculator, as opposed to the minus key. And once again, I'm just advancing by using my right arrow. Then I have a negative one, a five, four, two, two, and a negative 10. Okay, I wanna hit my right arrow key once more to position my cursor just to the right of the rightmost bracket. Now we need to find a way to store this matrix. So I'm going to store the matrix by hitting the store key, which is right down here. And that arrow is going to appear. And now I'm going to hit second and then the x inverse key. It looks like it's x to the negative one power, but it's really x inverse. And because I have the second key hit already, I'm actually going to access this matrix feature that's written in blue up above. And now you're going to see I have a list of matrices, okay? So these are all storage places. 
for any matrix that I might create. So I want to store this first matrix as A, and the way I select it, since it's associated with the number one, I just have to press one on my keypad. And so what my screen is telling me now is that the matrix that I've just entered is stored as matrix A. I need to do the same thing for my constant matrix. So let's remember what we're doing here. My constant matrix is right here, and I want to enter that now. Okay, so I'm going to use the same procedure. I'm going to use alpha zoom. Now my constant matrix has three rows, so I'll select three, but it only has one column, so I need to select one for my column. And now I can hit OK. And now I get this template, and I'm going to start entering the values for my constant matrix. So the first value is 17, once again, I'm just using my right arrow to help me advance through the matrix, then 11, and then zero. Now I'm going to position my cursor just to the right of this new matrix, and once again, I need to store it. So I've hit the store button, and now I'm going to hit my second key to access the matrix feature, which is written right above this X inverse button. And I want to store this matrix in a new place. I want to store it as matrix B, so I'm going to select two. Now, if I already had matrices stored in A and B, doing this would actually replace the existing matrices with the new matrices that I've just entered. Now that I have my matrices stored, what I want to do is I want to press clear. The next thing we want to do is we want to multiply the inverse of our coefficient matrix by our constant matrix. Now at this point you don't even know what the inverse of a matrix looks like and that's okay because we can use the inverse key on the calculator to help us compute the inverse of this matrix. So this is what we're going to do. The first thing we want to do is we want to access matrix A because remember we are multiplying the inverse of matrix A times matrix B and that's going to give us our solutions. So to access matrix A once again I'm going to hit second and then the X inverse button, and I'm going to press one to select matrix A, and then I'm going to hit that X inverse button again. And now I have the notation for the inverse of matrix A. And our equation says that I want to multiply the inverse of matrix A by matrix B, okay? So I need to access matrix B, I guess, before I do that, because we're multiplying these matrices together, I need to hit the multiplication key. And then I'll hit second, matrix. And now I'm going to select two, because that's where matrix B is. And now I can hit enter. And you can see that I have a matrix of solutions. Um, and so what this says, this 3 is our value for X, this 2 is our value for Y, and the 1 is our value for Z. This, these are actually the values that are associated with that variable matrix that was talked about in the handout. So these would be your solutions, and they're the solutions are listed in the order in which the variables appear in the equations. So the first value corresponds to X, the second value to Y, and the third value to Z. So this is how you can use your calculator to help you solve a system of equations.